Another new convenience tool is Wireless Protected Setup, or WPS for short. Wireless Protected Setup is a new innovation to help make it easier for consumers to set up security on their wireless networks. It involves simply typing in a pin or using a button. And this button can be an actual physical button on your device or it can be a software button, so to speak, on a utility provided on your router and your wireless adapters. In order for it to work, your device has to be WPS compatible. And usually what you'll see is you'll see a little symbol like this on the box when you purchase it. This is usually found on only newer devices. And we'll cover all this in greater detail later. So for now, we want to get back to encryption. Encryption basically comes in three flavors, WEP, WPA, and WPA2. WEP is basically limited to older wireless B routers. It stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy. Basically all WET was designed to do was to provide the same type of security that you could expect from a wired network. Well now that processor speeds have gone way up, the time and effort it takes to crack a WET security key is down to about 10 minutes. So if somebody has some halfway sophisticated tools they can, and you have your network secured with WEP, they can, they can crack your network key in about 10 minutes. WPA and WPA2 were introduced with Wireless G. The difference between WPA and WPA2 is the encryption method. WPA uses TKIP, which is still way more secure than WEP and WPA2 uses an even stronger method of encryption called AES. So in setting up encryption, you need to have three elements set up identically on all your wireless devices. First is your SSID, which we discussed earlier. Then you need to decide on your encryption type, whether that be WEP, WPA, or WPA2. You'll also see a lot of devices with the choice of WPA slash WPA2, meaning that you can use the same encryption key for both WPA and WPA2. So setting up security basically entails ensuring that you have the same SSID, encryption method, and encryption key set up on all your devices. Once you have it set up, you want to either take that information, write it down, save it to a text file, or as I explained earlier, to a USB drive for safekeeping. The way you set this up on your router is to either use the web interface or a lot of newer routers are including this in their easy setup CDs. The way you set this up on a PC is to basically find your wireless utility and the one that we're going to be using is the zero configuration protocol service that is provided with Windows. You can also use the third party utility that comes with your wireless adapter. But in this case, we'll simply click on it and then change advanced settings and to add a wireless network to our preferred networks. Now what our preferred networks are, are networks that we've already connected to in the past. If you're a laptop user, this is actually a convenient little tool that you can use to connect to all the networks that you connect to when you're traveling. You can have them all saved in here and then you can move them up and down according to priorities and you can add little settings such as connect automatically or don't connect automatically, etc, etc. Anyway, to add a wireless network, we would simply click add. We would simply type in the SSID and then choose the type of encryption that we're going to be using. And let's just say we're going to use WPA2 and we're going to use AES. WPA2 can use TKIP as well if that's what you need to connect. And in some cases it'll take a little bit of finagling to be able to actually enter the network key. In this case we want to uncheck this then uncheck that. And then we can enter our wireless key. Okay, I'm not really doing a good job of explaining this to you, but we're going to get into this in greater detail later. I just want to give you a basic feel for what's involved right now. So it's really not a difficult thing to do. It's a little bit of a pain, but once it's done, it's done. 
and you'll feel much better about yourself and your wireless security when you do. So in a nutshell, those are the basics of wireless security.